Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies SOFI stock. Normally, I report on very positive and bullish videos for SoFi Technologies because I do like the future growth trajectory of this particular company and their stock price. However, I also go over some of the bearish negative videos surrounding this particular company so you all can weigh the pros and cons, the risk to the reward, so you can make informed investment decisions. So in this video, it's going to be dedicated to a negative bearish look at SoFi Technologies about what bears are saying could happen with this company. And of course, I'll be giving my opinion as we read through these articles if there is any misinformation. And in today's video, we're going to look at how one of SoFi Technologies' largest investors are actually selling out of their SOFI stock. Then we're also going to talk about how investors could potentially be selling their SoFi stock right now after the recent earnings report surge. And then lastly, we're going to be going over another article that says that SoFi Technology is just an overall sell and he has a price target on this company that is only $3.50. So of course, I will be breaking down that price target and how he calculated it. For more videos like this one, remember to go and smash that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below about SoFi Technologies. And if you are bullish or bearish on this company, subscribe for more videos like this one. And without further ado, let's just jump right into today's stories. If you didn't know, SoFi Technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that basically operates as a digital bank. They offer their consumers anything they could probably need through a digital app, which gives their customers access to financial services and a plethora of financial products. Right now, the SoFi stock price is trading at $7.67 per share. However, analysts as well as investors think that the company is fairly worth around anywhere between $7 on the low end and $11 on the high end for the next 12 months. But as we will see in this video, the stock price target goes even lower than $7 according to some investors and analysts. SoFi Technologies has been in investors' eyes lately because SoftBank, which is one of SoFi Technologies' largest investors, has actually sold a large portion of their overall SoFi Technologies holdings according to their amended 13D filing. And to make the news even worse, SoftBank even hinted that they may sell all of their SoFi stock and that would be absolutely absolutely catastrophic for various SoFi investors. This bad news comes off of the heels of good news regarding SoFi Technologies quarter two report where they brought in around $356 million worth of revenue for their earnings report, which beat analysts' expectations and forecasts where they were only supposed to bring in $340.8 million and their earnings per share came in better than expected at a loss of 12 cents instead of a loss of 14 cents. However, despite this, SoftBank actually used used this good news to then sell their SoFi stock at a higher price, and the majority of their selling took place on August 5th and August 8th. On August 5th, SoftBank sold around 5.38 million shares at an average price of $7.99, and then they sold another large portion of their position in SoFi of around 6.68 million shares at an average price of $8.17 on August 8th. Now, despite this, SoftBank still owns around 80 3.21 million shares, which means they still have around a 9% stake in the company, which is still very large. Over the past year, SoftBank has been hit extremely hard due to the volatile and negative macroeconomic environment. To put this into perspective, during quarter one, the investment company reported a record loss of $23.4 billion. And this is catastrophic, where the CEO even had to do some explaining. Now, I also want to add that SoftBank didn't just sell SoFi Technologies, and they didn't sell SoFi because they don't think it's a good company. They are selling various positions because SoftBank is in trouble right now. To reinforce this point, I also want to point out that SoftBank also sold other companies in their portfolio. So they sold off a large stake in Uber as well as Opendoor, to where they gained around $5.6 billion. In addition to that, their private investments into ByteDance and Klarna have also been battered by the overall market. So this particular particular company, which is an institutional investor into SoFi Technologies, is not selling their SoFi shares because they don't believe in the company. They are selling because they need to, due to how poor they are currently performing in the macroeconomic environment, which is pretty negative right now. So some of these bears and naysayers are saying that SoftBank is selling SoFi because SoFi is not a good company. However, I just don't see that from SoftBank selling. Now, it would be different if SoftBank 
only sold their SoFi shares or if they sold all of their SoFi technology stock. However, that's not what happened. Now, if they end up actually selling all of their SoFi shares, that would be a completely different story. And then I would say, yes, that's extremely negative and bearish. But I really need to make sure that investors are getting the facts straight here. Not to mention SoFi Technologies has also had a tough year along with a plethora of other high growth and technology stocks. Right now, investors are scared, so they are liquidating their high growth technology stocks and they're flooding into value stocks or even bonds. But the good news for SoFi Technologies is due to their quarter two earnings report, the stock price absolutely was ignited. For instance, on August 3rd alone, the SOFI share price surged by around 28.4%, which is absolutely phenomenal. So clearly, companies like SoftBank are going to take profits on such a radical surge. And this surge was mainly attributed to how SoFi Technologies, for the quarter which ended on June 30th, their revenue went up 50% year over year, which means that this company is rapidly scaling. So I would say SoftBank and other institutions were actually wise practicing proper risk management policies by selling some of their position after a surge of around 28%. And this is why even though I said that the stock price was going to surge after their earnings report, I also said that it was going to end up correcting and going back down because a surge like that is just unsustainable for the short term, which is why SoftBank as well as other investors think that this pop in their stock price could actually end up in a full reversal where the stock price starts trending downward again, which I wouldn't be surprised about because the overall macroeconomic environment like we talked about earlier is very negative. Now, the positive news about SoFi Technologies is that they did raise their overall guidance for their earnings per share, their EBITDA, as well as their revenues for the entire year of 2022, which is very bullish and positive. We also have to remember that SoFi Technologies is rapidly growing, and that's really what I want to talk about because this particular stock author thinks that SoFi Technologies is way overvalued right now, and I can agree to disagree on this point. Yes, depending on what metrics we use and what accounting ratios we use, you can say that SoFi stock is overvalued, but that would also apply to the majority, if not all, growth stocks on the market right now, because the whole point of a growth stock is that you are trying to buy the company now based upon what it could be in the future, even if it's trading at a slight premium right now. So for this particular point, I want you to hear the author's words, and I will quote it where he says that SoFi continues to trade at a premium to its fintech peers. Established rivals like Block and PayPal trade at a much lower price to sales or PS multiple than this company. SoFi stock trades for around 5.1 times their trailing 12 month sales, end quote. And to put that into perspective, Block trades at around a 2.6 times PS multiple and PayPal trades at around a four times price to sales multiple. And ideally we would want this multiple to be as low as possible because that means investors are getting a better deal. However, I don't think we can fairly compare SoFi technologies to Block or PayPal for two main reasons. One, SoFi is growing substantially quicker than Block and PayPal, at least for now, at around a 40 to 50% compounding annual growth rate. Block and PayPal just aren't bringing in these numbers. And this also means that SoFi Technologies 5.1 times PS multiple will fall substantially quicker than Block and PayPal, which means they will be trading around the same PS multiple in the next few years. And this is based off of SoFi's future growth. The author even goes on, and in my opinion, rebuttals what he just said by saying that SoFi's higher rate of revenue growth somewhat justifies this, and that's exactly what I was alluding to. That's exactly right. SoFi's higher growth rate and their higher revenue compounding annual growth rate justifies their premium of a 5.1 times PS multiple, which honestly is not even that high, especially when we're talking about a fintech company and a growth stock. However, nonetheless, the author of this article says that SoFi has a D rating according to Portfolio Grader and that he is overall bearish on this company and says that the company is a selling opportunity. So you do need to be aware of that. Technically, you are paying a premium for this company and the stock price could fall substantially lower, but in the long term, I think that it's going to even out and that SoFi is going to become extremely competitive. And that's exactly what our last article is going to be talking about. Right now, the author of the Seeking Alpha article says that following their earnings report, he actually maintains his price target and price prediction for SoFi Technologies stock price of $3.50. And he is calculating this based off of their current financials and metrics, not their future growth. Because if we actually incorporate their future growth, the company is worth anywhere between $7 and $11, according to both bearish and bullish analysts. That means including critics and naysayers, as well as people that are extremely positive about this particular company. 
company. Quarter 2 was very important for SoFi because they brought in their second highest quarter ever in terms of their overall product growth. This means they have around 6.56 million different products available to customers right now at the end of that particular quarter, which to me is extremely positive. The author goes on to talk about how the reason why this company is bad right now and it should only be worth $3.50, which technically, if we're taking current metrics, I agree with him. However, if we're looking down the road for the next 12 months or even the next few years, this is grossly undervalued and I would buy SoFi stock up substantially if the stock price dropped to $3.50. However, his main caveat with this company and criticism is their adjusted EBITDA, which is their earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. So I'm going to quote directly from his article, and he is right here, and that's why I want you to listen to him. And he says... And I quote, adjusted EBITDA is a non-GAAP measure that allows for a wide range of net income corrections, including, but not limited to, depreciation and amortization, share-based expenses, transaction-based expenses, fair value changes in warrant liabilities, corporate borrowing-based interest costs, income taxes, and other non-reoccurring items, end quote. And he is 100% correct. When an EPS estimate comes in for their EBITDA, it's on an adjusted basis. So he says that their adjusted EBITDA is not fair and it doesn't really show what the company is actually making in terms of profitability and that's why management is using this to conceal their underlying losses and I actually agree with him that is exactly what they're doing however what he purposefully fails to mention is that in 2024 they will be profitable on a gap basis which means not an adjusted basis they're just going to be flat out profitable on a generally accepted accounting principles basis and that's extremely positive so even while the company Company is trading technically positive on a non-GAAP basis, which is an adjusted EBITDA, it doesn't mean that the company will not become profitable or achieve profitability because according to current forecasts, they will achieve profitability at the end of 2024, which to me is extremely bullish. However, I think he purposefully leaves out that by 2025, this company is going to be extremely profitable because remember, they're going to achieve profitability according to current forecasts at the end of 2024. And in 2025, the company is going to bring in on a GAAP basis basis profits of around 28 cents per share which is extremely good especially for this company and they're going to have a lower price to sales multiple and ps ratio just like the previous author was providing criticism about so honestly i don't think these are that big of a deal we can explain away softbank selling shares we've solved the mystery of their ps ratio compared to other fintech peers and we also know that their future growth projection justifies their current stock price somewhat even though technically yes i agree with this author that the current stock price is is trading at a premium and the stock price can continuously fall lower during this macroeconomic environment which is relatively negative right now due to higher interest rates and crazy amounts of inflation. The author ends by saying that investors are overly optimistic on SoFi Technologies and it's best to sell right now off of this dead cat bounce. And if you didn't know, a dead cat bounce is basically when a stock is falling and then it spikes up randomly just to eventually fall back down again. And the author thinks that right now we are right here which gives investors as well as institutions a prime time to sell or at least take profits and that's exactly what we saw SoftBank do because that's just proper risk management. Now if you're willing to hold this company for the long term or until it becomes profitable, I'm willing to bet that the current stock price is going to be lower than the future stock price in 2025. But if not, feel free to sell now and jump back into the play at a lower cost basis. It really just depends on your own risk tolerance and your investing strategy, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Remember to go and smash that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.